Right. Antibiotics in cattle. Um, again, things you're going to need poor quadrant on. Pretty much the same sorts of things. Peritonitis. Uh, again, this can be in um, perforated abomasal ulcers or any uh, surgery where you've entered the abdomen and gotten contamination, so you're doing your left displaced abomasum, this sort of thing. You can uh, accidentally put something in. Pericarditis, mostly associated with hardware disease. Hardware disease is where the cow has ingested a, uh, a piece of metal, like a nail or a, a wire, and uh, it moves down to its lowest point in the reticulum and there it can penetrate through the reticulum and what's lying right next to the reticulum the diaphragm and the heart on the other side of the diaphragm so the nail goes through the reticulum through the diaphragm and into the pericardium and you get a pericarditis and that's called hardware disease and we try to prevent that by giving cattle uh, rumen magnets so these are big oblong uh, magnets that you use a balling gun uh, with and just give them to them and the magnet falls into the rumen and down to the reticulum and it'll grab hold of those metal objects and keep them from perforating. So that's pericarditis. And uh, this is really difficult to treat when it occurs. It's a bad, bad prognosis. Uh, of course, osteomyelitis, <coughs> we see this probably most commonly. It starts as a uh, sole ulcer. Uh, and then progresses into an osteomyelitis of the coffin bone or higher, though it can certainly occur anywhere else. Septic arthritis um, in cellulitis. Se septic arthritis probably most common in calves uh, with umbilical infections where they've gone septicemic from the umbilical infection. Speaking of calves, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Calves less than a week of age, you can use pretty well all the antibiotics that you would use in a dog orally. This is because the esophageal groove is closed at that particular point. So you give the, the um, clavamox, you give the amoxicillin tablet or whatever, and they swallow it and, it and it goes through the esophageal groove right into the abomasum without entering the rumen. <coughs> we know that at six weeks of age, that no longer occurs. Uh, it enters the rumen, and you have to treat them as an adult cow, so you have a lot of limitations there. Now, what I'll uh, try to do, or what I've tried to do when I was doing calves, uh, sometimes I try to extend that by putting the antibiotic or the medication in um, uh, milk replacer or, or electrolytes and letting them nurse. Remember that nursing is a reflex that closes the esophageal groove as well. So I could prolong it. I would treat um, uh, two, maybe even three-week-old calves uh, that way, although I had no hard evidence uh, that it uh, was working. But those are possibilities. So we know uh, you can give it orally at, uh, up to a week. We know after six you have to treat them as an adult, and probably there's a gray line somewhere in between. Calves are one of my favorite species. I, I grew up uh, on a dairy farm, and my very first job was uh, uh, feeding the babies. So they still have a, a special place in my heart uh, for that. You may not realize, I used to do primarily large animal, primarily cattle work here uh, when I first came here for the first eight years, and really prior to that in my residency. I still liked it. I ran into two problems uh, with it. <coughs> uh, one. Uh, I was spending all my time doing foot trims uh, and sole ulcers, and so I didn't get to use my pharmacology very much. And the other thing is there is an emphasis on uh, herd health, so the individual animal uh, tends to be valued less than the herd, and that's understandable. I still think there is a, a place for uh, individual animal being taught. My personal view is if if you think you're going to go through your DVM and go out there and the farmers are going to grab you up because to do herd health, you're mistaken, okay? You have to build a rapport with them, all right, or you have to have some sort of credibility. 
and more commonly it's building that rapport so it's going out there and, and pulling the calf, it's uh, doing the c-section, it's treating the mastitis, it's doing all the individual animal work to build the rapport and then you can get into the herd health uh, from that. Okay, at least that's what I did in practice before I went back to academia. Okay, um, four quadrant combos. Um, you probably don't care since it's no longer available, but I, I really liked LS50 when it was available. Um, lincomycin, spectinomycin, uh, the spectinomycin is off the market. I have heard where LS50 is still on. That's the poultry product that comes in a powder of lincomycin and spectinomycin. And it's nice, uh, spectinomycin gets your E. coli and overlaps on your staph and your lincomycin uh, also gets staph through streps, anaerobes, and some activity, good activity, but not absolute on B. fragilis. The reason it's crossed out is you're not supposed to use an antibiotic if there's an approved one available for you. And we have uh, fluorophenicol, all right. So um, in the right circumstance, I would still use LS50, but primarily four quadrant uh, fluorophenicol. Other possibilities if you don't want to go, uh, it's a little unnerving to think that you're taking a powder designed for oral administration and injecting it IV or sub-Q, uh, but it, it, it seems well tolerated. But if you don't want to do that, another option is a safety pure uh, lincomycin. Again, in uh, small animals, you're going to use clindamycin, but in food animals, lincomycin is approved in pigs, okay, and that's what you would do now. Uh, <coughs> uh, again, the warning about B. fragilis losing some susceptibility. The, I'll remind you that some of the information in the literature is wrong about lincomycin in cattle. You will read in some places mistakenly that you cannot use it at all in cattle. You cannot use it orally at all in cattle. It, it um, just kills the rumen flora but injectable uh, seems to be relatively well tolerated. A few minor loosening stools, this sort of thing, but nothing like the, the oral. So fluorophenicol is your, your big four quadrant there. So we can't use fluoroquinolones, we can't use aminoglycosides, this is kind of what we're left with. All right, uh, here are your pathogens of the urinary tract. Again, E. coli, but this time we've got bacteria. Uh, as a common pathogen. Uh, <coughs> all Septifure is a good product. Uh, uh, we have the Exceed, which is the uh, repository form that can be used now. That helps us a lot. I want to just mention uh, the Chironibacterium. It's, it's Chironibacterium renale. Uh, and this is primarily a postpartum pyelonephritis or cystitis that you'll see. So they've calved in a dirty area or it's been an assisted delivery and so they've developed an ascending infection. So Chironibacterium renale cystitis, more commonly we associate it with a pyelonephritis. That's usually a postpartum, but again we have a variety of beta-lactams that we can use.